Listen, it's late and I quickly want to put out a video. I'd like to show you how to animate pre-existing emotes, but I have a specific style in mind. This is Party Parrot and this is Conga Line Parrot. So I'm going to take one of your emotes because I ask you to send them on Twitter and animate them in that style-ish. But the goal here is to create a template that you can basically drag and drop two different parts of your emote and have it working. So let's do this. Oh, and this video is sponsored by your mom. What a lovely lady. So that's the Twitter post. My goal basically is to have an emote, separate the head from the emote and just have it going in a circular motion. Of course, we're going to slap that RGB look to it. So that means that it's not applicable to every emote. Animated ones, for example, are, <laughs> are not going to work. Um, <laughs> but of course, as an example, I'm just going to find the ones that match what I'm looking for. I don't know why people didn't just send the transparent ones. I mean, some people did. What, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I guess this can work again, just using the head part, but I wanted to have like the head on top of the body. This would need three layers. So the body, the hands, and then the face. This one is nice, but the head is not separated. So for example, the conga line wouldn't work. So this is from Rebecca Chen. Wow, I have not opened After Effects in a while. Oh, never mind. I guess eight days ago. <laughs> All right, let's pick a size. We're going to create a composition, new composition, and we're going to make it 400 by 400. I think the biggest emote size is like 112. So we are overshooting. We want the time to be, let's put two seconds, but it's probably going to be shorter. Nice. I forgot to name it. Let's go back to composition, composition settings. And this is going to be the party comp. Let's talk about preparation. I mentioned that we needed two different layers. We can probably cut them out in After Effects and do everything in After Effects. But since my goal is to create a template that you can drag and drop, I'm going to show you how to get two layers of your emote if you don't have like the PSD, if you haven't made them yourself. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and click copy image or, you know, we downloaded it so we can use that too. I'm going to go to photopia.com or photop, whatever you want to call it. It's photop. I just like calling it photopia. We click new project and we can see that the size basically adapts to whatever you have copied. 1000 by 1000. That's a high quality emote right there. I appreciate it so much. But let's go back to 400 because that's what we want. Click create and I'm going to control V. Control T since we're in full screen if you're not on full screen you want control alt t so it doesn't open up a new tab in chrome and we're going to align this scale it down nice now it's time to basically cut it out there's multiple tools for example i can go and find the magic wand tool click on the outline as we can see it has all of the outline hold shift to add an extra selection and then click inside now what i can do is add a mask so bottom right corner here add raster mask Boom, my emote is separated from the background. I can see the eyes are also transparent. We don't want that. So I'm going to hold Alt, click on the mask, and I'm just going to paint them white. Brush tool, D to reset the colors, X to flip them, foreground color is white. We can see it over there. Now we're good. Hold Alt, click on the mask again. Now we're ready. Now, as I mentioned, I want to separate the head from the body. I'm going to duplicate the layer, hold Alt, and uh, click drag up, turn off the bottom layer. It's basically a safety layer, if you will. I'm going to press P to open up my pen tool. There's other ways of doing that, but I'm just going to go with the pen tool. Click and then click and drag to create a curve. We're going to go around the chin like this. Nice. Hold control to click and move. Click again, curve again, hold alt to move the handle separately like that. We're going to bring that handle over to the side and boop, go outside. Boom, boom, boom. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> now I can either right click and create a selection or go up top here and click on selection. Paint black on uh, the body part. The body part sounds weird. Right click, make this big. Oop, not that big. Make sure foreground color is black. And there you go. Control D to deselect. Hold Alt, click on the mask. We have this. Okay, so now we need the body. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that bottom layer here that has the whole thing. Turn it on. And uh, since we still have our shape, we can make another selection. We actually don't need to select the, the head here. So we need to go back to the pen tool and then click selection. Once again, click OK. Hold Alt, click on the mask. And remember that this time we want the body to be white, the head to be black. We're going to turn off the head layer here. So we're going to press Control Shift I to invert the selection. Press B, mask. Nice. Control D and you can even press P to go to the pen tool, right click and remove the path. Hold Alt, click on the mask. And basically this is what we have this and that. And we need to export that. So we can go file, export as PNG, click save and pick where you want it. Call this one head, turn it off, turn on the body, file, export as PNG, save body. So that part is done. So now what I can do is drag and drop all of that into my project. I'm going to select both of them, drag and drop them on my timeline. 
So yeah, I'm guessing it's probably going to be, it's actually going to be less than a second probably. So in case you still don't understand the principle, I'm going to select the head, just the head, and I'm going to do this with it. That's pretty much it. Probably around here. Control Z and let's do exactly that. I'm going to draw a circle just so I can see where to make the anchor point follow. It's fine. We're going to align that. So at the bottom here, I can zoom in on the timeline and we're going to use the frames to figure out like how long would the movement and to keep it consistent. I scale down my circle. You can see how tiny it is. Let's zoom in or oh, let's make this fit. Actually, I'm going to select the head, press P for position and we'll be able to add a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch and we should have automatic keyframes from there. So every five frames, I want it to be at one quarter of the circle. So actually I want it to start maybe. So this is the anchor point, right? And this is how I would want it to, to follow up. Let's lower it. Now we're talking. Okay, I'm gonna bump up the resolution here. <laughs> That's way better. Zoom in a little bit. Let's say I want this to be, this is my first position. So we'll bring it to five frames. I'll move this to one eighth of an arc, go to 10, move this to about quarter and then continue. Okay, then I believe we can go ahead and basically smooth all of this out. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring the comp area back to where it is so it loops. We're gonna press play. Not bad. There's only one part here where it's, it goes kind of like out of bounds, we'll say. And uh, all I'm gonna do for that is basically scale up the, the body just a little bit, and then I'm gonna position it a little closer. Since we have our animation, we can get rid of that shape layer. I'm gonna delete it. And let's add the RGB effect. I'm gonna add an adjustment layer. Go to effects, color correction. Let's go hue and saturation. We're gonna go to the first frame, right where it says channel range. We want to click on the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Then we're gonna go to the last frame, and we're gonna input one for one revolution. Okay, if we play. Nice, technically we're done, but this is where I gotta make it into some sort of a template. Basically every element needs to be a composition. So I'm gonna click on the head, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to pre-compose. We're gonna call that comp head. So that's gonna be its own composition where you can drag and drop a head. Same thing for the body, body, pre-compose and call it body. Now I'm gonna double click on head to open up the composition. And this is what it looks like. That's it. I'm gonna go back to my party comp, double click on body. It's gonna open up the body comp. And to show you an example, I'm gonna go to the head comp. I'll show you basically how you would put your own image in there. Pretty sure I have some emotes saved somewhere. Oh, this will do. Didn't mean to do that. Drag, drop. And all you have to do is make sure it fits. So hold shift to maintain proportions. And this is not bad. Put it around here. We probably wanna flip it. There you go. And if I go back here, <laughs> doesn't match the body, but it has the animation. It's black and white, so it's not gonna have the, the RGB effect. So you can go back here, do this, it matches better. But of course you would do this with your own emote with its own body so it would match. And now for the conga line effect. I'm gonna go to my project and duplicate the party comp, control D I believe. Party comp two, double click on it to open it. We're gonna go to composition, composition settings. We're gonna call this one conga line. But basically we need to add a movement halfway through. We need to see half part of this out of frame while the right part of it is in frame and then it'll just loop. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate those two because we need two of them basically. I'm going to control D, make sure they're both above each other. And I'm going to create a null or maybe multiple nulls to dictate the position. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because we already have position animation on the head. We can't just move it around. It's going to mess up our animation. So instead, null one is going to be position. I should probably I'm going to name this position. I'm going to use a little squiggly line, put it on position, squiggly line here, put it on position and with this selected, press P for position and I can move it around. 2000 years later. I once again did a bunch of stuff that was wrong. What we're going to do is actually reanimate the whole null. So click on position, press P to bring up the position, go to the first frame. And actually we want this to be out of the frame completely. So we're going to drag it like that. And then we're going to go to the last keyframe. And we also want that to be out of the frame. We're going to use the guides like that. So basically our animation right now is this. It makes it way faster, so I want to slow it down by basically making it last longer. I'm going to bring up the comp area up to one second and just bring this right there. There we go. Okay, now that we have a full animation of this coming in and out of frame, it should be easier to transpose it. So I'm going to select all three of those. I'm going to right click, pre-compose and move all attributes this time. All right, so basically that's our animation. And basically when it hits kind of like the middle of the face here, I want to select it, 
control D to duplicate. And I actually want to move the composition to about here. So basically we're gonna get this. We just need a third one to complete the animation and it will be good. That one that we just moved, we can duplicate it. Wait when it's about there, the middle of the face, and then just drag the opposite side to where it's about the middle of the face. Now we should have this and it should repeat perfectly. There it is. <laughs> I messed up three times before I got it right. And imagine if you're spamming this into your chat, how cool it's gonna look. So let me rearrange the compositions here. We're gonna have party comp. So that's the regular one. Okay, we're gonna have conga line, which is this one. Then we're gonna have head and body. I'm gonna change the colors on this just so you can see them. So red is what you're gonna be modifying. So head, body, head, body. I should probably save at this point. All right, so party comp, conga line is what you want. And then head and body is what you need to input. Remember that if you put another head, you will have another head. You would also have another head here. So this will still work. So in that way, it's a template. So in order to render them as GIFs, we're gonna use a media encoder. Basically, we're gonna go to a composition with the right composition selected, composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. It's gonna add it here. So you wanna click on the drop down here, no matter what format it has here, you wanna go up top and see animated GIF. There you go, you can click on it to get more options, make sure everything is right. Notably the size, for example, this is where if you wanna upload to Twitch, you can already put it at 112 or whatever they ask you for animated emotes. Okay, it looks good. You can click OK, and then you can click on the name here to figure out where you want it to be exported, then click Save. Let's add the second one since this is a queue. Let's click on conga line. Okay, that's our conga line. Composition, add to media encoder, blah, blah, blah. And it should have the exact same preset from there. Click on the name to make sure it saves it in the right place. Click save and play. All right, they should be right here. Here you have your emotes. Perfectly exported. Let's pick some other emotes. Right click, copy image, go back to photo P. We can delete those. Control V, then Control Alt T since we're not in full screen mode. Oh, this is big. Let's uh, <laughs> lower the size real quick. That's nice. I'm gonna press W for the magic wand tool. I'm gonna click on the white part. I'm gonna press delete. Whoop. And just like that, no background. File export as PNG save new folder with the name of the person. I believe it was step two. Nice, I'm gonna call this one head and we're just gonna use the head. So, so in the composition named head, I'm gonna turn off by clicking on the, the eye here. I'm gonna turn this one off. Then I'm gonna find the image, drag, drop. You know what, not bad. I'm gonna go to the body composition. This one is bugging out, but don't pay attention and turn it off. So no body, just the head. Does it still work? Heck yeah. That's alone and that's conga line. Composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder. It's an animated GIF, pick the right place, save, conga line, Media Encoder, pick the right spot, save, press play, you're done. Well, when it's done, you're done. There you go, done. Boom, 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 conga line, boom, 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 party comp, boom, 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 boom. One thing that you need to watch out for is the size when it comes to Twitch, I believe it's less than a megabyte or something. Let me open it up. Hey, editor guy level here. I actually turned, I paused the recording and I didn't turn it back on until way later. But basically, yes, Twitch requires less than a megabyte when it comes to the size of your animated GIF. For the actual resolution, it's one. It's from 112 up to like 4K. So basically what I did to reduce the size is that I reduced the resolution. I put them at 300 by 300 and I also reduced the frame rate. They were at 50 frames per second. I set them at 25 frames per second and they were all underneath one megabyte. So that's the secret. If you don't want the next area to be empty, you can go ahead and paint. Photoshop has generative fill. This also has some AI things. You can also content aware fill if you don't want to use AI. I'm just going to paint a little bit. Hold alt to color pick and then not what I wanted. Hardness zero. There we go. Just keep on color picking and 
painting. Control D to deselect and save the body. Let's adjust this so it fills the screen. You know what? For those who are gonna download the, the template, I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna fix it. <laughs> there we go. Now that's smooth. <laughs> so yeah, this is what we came up with. <laughs> Congrats to everyone who got a free emote. There will be a link in the description. I'll upload all of those. There will also be a link in the description for the Adobe After Effects project. I believe I was clear in explaining how to use it. If you don't have Adobe After Effects, I'm sorry. Someone will probably make a DaVinci Resolve or some other software template for you. That's just what I'm comfortable with. And if you do have Adobe After Effects, don't ask me questions. You should know how to use it. Uh, it's not my job. I sold you the car. I'm not going to teach you how to drive. <laughs> Apart from the fact that I that I just did in this video. Anyways, make sure you follow me on everywhere, really everywhere. And I need to go to bed. Thank you so much for watching. Go out there. Make me proud. Get a level. Out.